Welcome everyone to the night shift of Hefla TV where we covered the American division of the Join Dota Leagues season 3. This is of course division 1, so the big boys are playing here with Union Gaming Peru versus the house is down. So Peru versus Brazil overall. My name is Coacher and joining me is Hefla Moak. Hello. So excited to have another night shift day. Eh? Yeah, I'm so excited. No, actually, I'm I'm so tired. I'm dead tired. I actually f fell asleep like 20 minutes ago, and I was like, now I'm feeling horrible. Really, everything hurts, and oh, I hate night shifts. But we are always here for the viewers, and we're gonna make this an awesome cast. Kappa mode guaranteed. Yeah, by the way, one viewer already remembers you from yesterday, saying, "Don't lose any more pants, Hefla." <laughs> pants? Oh, yeah, pan shorts. Yeah. <laughs> you bet your shorts, and you lost them, man. Sure, I was betting my shorts on the We even got a comment on YouTube that they want your shorts. <laughs> yeah, true. I actually I actually answered that one. Yeah. No, but it's cool that, that some people even check out our YouTube and then just make the comments like, Hefla, where are your shorts? <laughs> but coming into this game now, the draft actually taking some time. Union Gaming, they took 40 seconds of the reserve time just deciding on the first panel already, which is a little bit weird. Maybe just Captain was AFKing or something, but... Do you have any favorites coming into this game? To be honest, um, the house is down. Last time I've seen them, quite a nice performance while Union Gaming was struggling a bit. It was uh, up and down with their performance, but then again, they have five on the other side. We have a stand-in, small advantage there. But to be honest, overall, I think this is going to be a quite equal match. Yeah, at least I'm hoping for it. I think... On the betting site as well, it was like 70-30 in the favor of Union Gaming, if I'm not mistaken. But, I mean, we've seen it so many times, especially in Joint Dota League. Since it is a two-game series, it just ends up as a tie so damn often. And even yep. the so-called weaker teams, the underdogs, can definitely just give us an upright. I've seen it just today that I was really wrong with my predictions, like uh, Screen Squad versus Power Rangers. Like, I could have sworn last time I've seen Screen Squad that were in an awesome shape. And Power Rangers was really struggling after Scandal left and whatnot. Like they had really, they had some losses to teams they would have never lost before. But today, Power Rangers like awesome execution. Even when they're behind, even if they have a horrible laning, they just yep executed damn well and just won their game. So like they they aced the entire series with a 2-0. Absolutely amazing. So yeah, my definitely my my ratio on on betting for Power Rangers is definitely increased after today. Yeah, I mean, Power Rangers, I have to agree, they had kind of a dry spell, but hopefully they're on the rise again. But Union Gaming, they get their hands on the Razor, and actually, not first banned, but still banned it out in the first phase, the Death Prophet. So, definitely giving that hero the respect it deserves, I think. Yep, absolutely. I mean, the ban so far, everything is relatively standard. I mean, Doom, Death Prophet, yes, he deserves to be first banned material, in my opinion. Uh, the Lycan, today we actually saw a game where Lycan got through and Lycan got picked like it was like Christmas and Eastern together and he actually also won the game even though the start was horrible but to be honest I think it wasn't the Lycan that won the game it was really the overall team performance or the rest of the team I still think it's a hero you can I don't know I think ignore depending on the team because some teams they won't even pick even if it's available there's too many other strong heroes out at the moment. So Panda is coming right after and yeah, no cancer panda. Um that's that's good for me because I hate this hero. I just hated too much of that hero. Like is, from... is it like a boss kill because you just won't see team fights, at least from the side who doesn't have the panda, they're just trying to avoid it or I don't know. No it's... Is it just seeing one hero too much? Yeah, it's it's really just seeing one hero too much. Like I had the honor of casting like, I mean, I was cast in the entire summit, but, like, the qualifiers were before or were at 6.8 times, so I didn't see much Panda. But then the rest, the main event, like, was in, in 6.81, so I had Panda there, then I would have been cast in the ESL, all the time Panda, and then cast in the TI, all the time Panda, and even Razor. So Razor, for some reason, I'm not too tired of Razor, um, because it's, it's up and down, because we had Razors where they... They've taken quite some losses, and races were, I don't know, I, I can't even describe you, I think the panda is just a very annoying hero, <laughs> maybe that's it. Yeah, the, the playstyles of the panda and racer definitely differ quite a lot, 
I mean, with Razor, they're still just looking for fights, probably. Whereas, when you're up against the Panther, you, every time Primal Split, if you know, if you're the enemy and you know Primal Split is there, you kind of want to avoid it. Of course, unless you have heroes like Skyrath Mage or something that can guaranteed lock him down, but even then, it's a little bit risky. Yeah, absolutely. But we gotta look on the drafts. Like, we already talked about the Razor. The second band stage already started, but a Disruptor is coming here out for Union Gaming as a support. That's definitely, like, I haven't seen a Disruptor in a long time, even though I still think this is an awesome, a goddamn awesome hero. Like, I don't know. I don't know why it, he doesn't get utilized so much, because uh, right now we have, okay, one reason is, for example, that we have a Skyref Mage as an option, because many teams are looking for silence. Because there's crucial ultimates, you always want to dodge or you want to focus a target down. That's why the Void, that's why the Skyref Mage is so popular. So you have the Chrono, minus one, you have the Skyref Mage with the Seal, minus one. That's pretty decent. The Disruptor, the ultimate, it is dodgeable. Like you have, of course, options to somehow overcome it. You can swap in, out, four stuffs, all that works, of course. Then if your reaction is fast, the Disruptor is disrupted, as funny as it sounds. You don't even get the kinetic field up, and the static storm is just a temporary silence as such. But still, I think the Klimps, especially the Klimps, make that, makes that hero so strong, especially if you rush it. But anyway, on the other side, two tank heroes, Titan are waiting, our candidate for the offline, the Viper, maybe our candidate in the mid, because she can do quite okay against the Razor, even though her movement speed is horrible against static link, because the static link will soak you up when it comes to damage. And of course, the famous Rasta Hayataya man with the Master Open Wards. Yeah, I mean, kind of surprised that the Shadow Shaman even made it this far, not getting banned or picked before. Actually, I think the Disruptor, I'm actually really thinking about that there just aren't enough players that can actually properly utilize that hero. Maybe that's the reason he's not picked up. And of course, the second part is just other heroes like the Shadow Shaman and the Sky of Mage, they just have more damage output and more uses other than just pure team fight, because Disruptor, yes, with the Glimpse you can go for pickoffs and whatnot, but you have to actually be in position to use the Kinetic Field Static Storm properly, and yep. if you miss them, you are rather useless in the team fight. But here, I mean, the good thing about Disruptor is, like, when you get a clutch fight, then he's really good, especially a fight around the Rosh Pit. If you get, for example, Shadow Shaman and Titan, to, like, in one Kinetic Field with a Static Storm, those two are taken out. Like, if they don't cast any spells, they're absolutely useless. They're nothing but... Uh, Mega creep. That's that's pretty much it. So, it's all about timing with the disruptor. But anyway, we have the second st button stage is through. I've been already like I already mentioned the Skyrath mage, and yeah, he's definitely out. Even banned by Union Gaming. Even though I thought they were interested maybe in a second silence, and I think the Skyrath mage would have fit. It would have been another silence. Uh, yeah, another silence, another slow, and of course some magic and nuke. Also pretty nice because you can use it with the kinetic field together. Um, Morphling coming out as a core, and on the other side, also a core plus a support getting banned. We have the Sand King as well as the Ember. Yeah, and you know what I mean? They go for an Enchantress as well. Also a hero we maybe don't see as often. Still pops up every now and then, but a lot of teams kind of... If they pick a jungler, it's just going to be the Enigma, nothing else, recently at least. But House is down, having a Shadow Shaman and the Earthshaker now. And the Earthshaker is going to be... Well, as always, just the key factor in the early rotations, whether it be aggressive or defensive ones. And of course, Enchantress is going to be that hero for you in gaming here. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Enchantress against the Viper, not a huge fan. Also not a huge fan of Enchantress when there's a lot of burst damage, because, I mean, Enchantress HP pool is so low. And I just imagine a Titan that's chasing her. That is one Gush, one Anchor Smash, add a Shock. That is it already. If there's maybe some nature attendance ticking through or something else, a mech, whatever, okay, they might require a fissure or something, or maybe a viper strike on top of it, but the enchantress, like, the magical nuke potential we have here on the houses down is great. Plus, they pick a center warrener also into a viper, and everybody knows center warrener is one of the best kiteable targets unless the ultimate is available. Of course, with a stampede, you can ignore it all, but if a center is, for example, getting viper striked, or he still has, um, Viper's passive on him, then there's no plinking in, no plinking out, and it's it's really annoying on a Santa Warner, and that's why I also that's why I'm wondering why didn't they pick the Skyraf Mage, because the Skyraf Mage with the with the Seal for example and the Santa together that would have been amazing. Seal on someone, plasma field, double edge, and the stun. Everything is amplified. It really hurts. But yeah, they decided to ban it 
in right. instead they go for the Enchantress. I don't agree, but let's see. I mean, it's at least a jungle element. Some rotations maybe come in, some early tower push. Maybe they make it work. Yeah, and actually with this now, I think it also means that the Tide Hunter will just get super easy XP. It's not like the Disruptor really hurts against the Tide Hunter. And when you have that jungler, your support, he can't harass on the lame and pull at the same time. So Tide Hunter most likely will have just a pretty nice time overall. But the last band, Slark by Union Gaming, I mean... Were you seeing a Slark pick for Houses Down? Not really, no. Even though it might have fit. The only problem about the Slark is that he's really vulnerable against the Disruptor. Because like, if he gets low and the Disruptor really has his button already on the Static Storm and you silence him before uh, he goes into Shadow Dance, that's really bad. And this is also something, it's a debuff, he just can't Dark Pact out and therefore, yeah, it it could have happened but not a smart pick, not against a Disruptor. Yeah, I kind of tend to agree with you there, but I guess that they really deemed it worthy. Maybe their last pick, I mean Union Gaming's last pick will make more sense, but oh, we have a Meepo at our hands! And I don't think Union Gaming actually has anything to really like punish the Meepo at the moment. No, not really. The Earthshaker as the counter pick is on the other side. The, the Ember is already out there. I, yep. I don't see anything, like, not a special counter to Meepo. No crazy AoE except for Double Edge as such, but, hmm, Razor, hmm, I don't know. Let's see. The Meepo is definitely interesting. Yeah, and, I mean, even if you have that AoE damage, Meepo, of course, has that increased magic resistance compared to other heroes, just base one, but, well, I Spectre, it might be enough if he gets really tanky, but early on, Spectres are actually pretty damn squishy. Uh, I really fear for the lineup of Union Gaming, it's really execute heavy, so to say. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, when it comes to draft, I I absolutely on the side of the houses down. Like, absolutely. We have the Meepo, regardless of the position, but he can lock down a lot of heroes here. The Disruptor, absolutely allergic to being just ensnared all the time. The same for the center, he can be kited. They have two slows. They have two disables, another stun coming on top, the Ravage as ultimate, plus the ensnares of the Meepo. That's a lot of lockdown. And all of those heroes, all of those heroes are really, really vulnerable against that on Union Gaming side. And Chandra's Disruptor not coming with a huge HP pool. The same with the Spectre, a super squishy hero at the start of the game. Like, if the dagger doesn't save you somewhere into the trees, you very likely gonna die. The center, I already mentioned that against the Viper is not too much of an optimal matchup and I don't know, let's see. The, I mean the draft definitely THD here, but Union Gaming, let's see. The laning is important. If they get ahead there, might be interesting. Yeah, Union Gaming, it's really the pressure is on them I think to just perform and kind of get that Spectre really huge early on, get that Radiance, Heart of Terrace to follow up. But yeah, we both agree that THC has the better or easier to execute draft here. But yeah. straight up Because pause. they have a spam lineup. Like if they get sustained in this team, like I just imagine the Earthshaker and or the Shadow Shaman and or the Tide Hunter or maybe even all three, sometimes three Arcanes. We see that on some teams, but mostly two Arcanes is actually the goal for team but because that's enough. But if you can spam Shock disables, um, say it Viper Strikes then later, with the Arcanum Scepter, Gushes as well as Anchor Smash. This is so much magical and physical nuke just straight off the bat. Plus even Minus Armor is already included in the Tide Hunter. Big Fat Ravage coming out. It's so much potential there. It's really crazy and it doesn't need rocket science to make some of those synergies here really to work out. Like just rotate in, Fisher into Hex, into Shaco, into Gush. Like if that doesn't kill anything then I don't know what does. Yeah, I really I just completely agree with that it's so easy to, for them to just get collateral kills there, just randomly pop the Ravage, maybe even Corrosive Skin taking somebody down on top of it, poof damage of course. Yeah, the poof damage, I didn't even, that's the funny part, like, usually, can you remember times, um, it's, it's really actually sad to see how, I mean, we cast so many games every day, Coucher, we cast hundreds of games each month, thousands of games probably over a year, and before 6.8, if a Meepo was picked, we were like, Oh my god, it's a Meepo! Orgasm! But no, like now a Meepo, since 
I don't know. Since ESL, Meepo has been played so often and utilized in, in many ways. Like, Fnatic started, like, even introducing the support Meepo, transitioning into, um, and transitioning into damage, just like the Rave King support, for example, or the Alchemist support, which is of late relatively popular. But with the Meepo, I don't know why I'm not excited anymore. Uh, because the hero is, is kind of obvious. Like, you have to create space for him. If that fails, the Meepo is going to fail pretty heavy. But if the Meepo gets space, regardless of, of carry or Koro or support, he's going to be really fat and then you need to counter him. You need to counter him heavy, but we already talked about it. Like, counter a Meepo with this draft of Union Gaming. Because if you go for that Meepo, you might manage some initial damage. But if he's tank enough, there will be Fissures, there will be Echo Slam, there will be a Ravage and Disable from the Rasta as well. Plus, of course, like while all that is happening, of course, the other heroes are also striking back. Like, getting for this Meepo, committing to the Meepo kill, it will cost them dearly. Yeah, I just think DHD's lineup overall, they pretty much have it all. They have the burst damage, they have the lockdown, just team fight control, sustain as well, Viper going for that early mech most likely, and just being tanky overall with the corrosive skin. Tidehunter, of course, Kraken Shell, helping out to just stay in the front lines. I mean, Union Gaming, yes, they have the center to maybe just try to get some focus on him, but like you already said in the draft, Viper just completely kites that hero around, and overall it's just probably going to be a kite fest, even for the Spectre as well. Yep, and if you look at the chat, they actually have some problems with the servers at the moment, like uh, the THD guy is asking, like, are you sure this is Brazil's server? And the admin says, yes, check ping, and then they say, like, they have over 300 ping on a Brazil server, so... Hmm... But I don't know, I, I thought both of the matches are going to be played on US East, yeah, didn't th That's we? what they said. I mean, the admin himself said that in the lobby, didn't he? It's like, both games US E and now Southern Brazil, what? <laughs> well... We will never well, know. Go yeah. has been given, they will just give it their best. We will see. We will see. I mean, if the pink is too heavy, then I guess they can still swap to US East. That's the funny part, like, the Brazilian servers, like, as far as I know, they are also not too optimal for the Peruvian gamers. So, I don't know. Either way, so one will be US Eastern and one will be on Brazil servers and apparently the... I don't know. The THD guys, they're like, oh, well, this is our server and we are sort of having ping issues. But either way, let's see what this is. Is this really a Meepo mid? So I'm going to introduce the Radiant team. Starting here in the safe lane, we're going to have the stand-in. Is that Lelis or Ayelis? Is that a big I? I think it's it L, L because it has that little small oh, yeah. upper, whatever, yeah. hook. So it's Lelis on the Viper here. In the mid, we're going to see Meppo on Toy. Then in the offlane, we have, of course, the big fat sea monster, Titanta, played by Yuka. And, of course, hiding already here at the side shop is Vestios and Gui. The both people, actually, both of them, they are the two that have ping issues. And this is really bad because actually they have all the relatively ping important or ping sensitive abilities. Like if the Hex and Shackles is coming too late or the Fishers, then this is really bad. So I hope <laughs> their ping is fixed. Yeah, hopefully it just even itself out, but for Union Gaming, on the dark side, Jericho will be playing the Disruptor, leaving Cinderels to play the Jungle Enchantress, safe lane, Benjas of course, I think one of the most known Peruvian players overall, I think he's actually top of the leaderboard somewhere as well, or close to it, as far as MMR goes, but playing the Spectre, mid lane is Sidralin on the Razor and off lane, Angel on the Centaur. Yep, and we have even more problems. I really don't, that's, to be honest, like, I always enjoyed South American Dota, but when it comes to pauses, to start of the game, and disconnects, and server issues, then it's really one of the worst scenes after C. Yes. Yeah, like, it's, it, it's really like C Europe South win. American. Europe, Europe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, in, in Europe, we also have here and there some problems, especially when the CIS teams here and there, I don't know, sometimes they have, like, power cuts or whatsoever, but really, when it comes to South American Dota, we have a lot of issues. Like, uh, the, the, I don't know, the average waiting time per game is probably, I don't know, 10 minutes higher than in any other scene, except for C Dota. And C Dota, of course, we have always the problem that the teams are, yeah, naturally half an hour too late. 
and then we have a pause at the start, which is always like five to ten minutes. And then we have like random. Oh, sorry, we just ordered a pizza. We gotta take half an hour break. <laughs> that, that that was really, I think, <laughs> up there as far as retarded reasons for pauses go. But I yep. think Static Link mid lane already toy he has a lot of damage stolen, 28 points of it. So he's actually hitting for 21 damage now in the Meepo. Oh man, 21 and damage. Can you yep. get any last hits? And actually, they show themselves the support. They come out. But that was a horrible timing for them to come. They're not gonna catch anything. Nope. They were camping this secret shop for nothing. Or oh, it's not even a secret shop, it's a side shop. But I don't know. This Meepo versus Razor, he can drive that Meepo out all the time. Like, really, all the time. It's a 350 movement speed versus a 295. But even that is absolutely enough. As soon as he comes close, and this is just level 1 static link. By the way, also nicely empowered with that fat little link. Uh, by this uh, mythical item, or is it even mythical? It's um, immortal, but yeah, I, I definitely like that one. It's how can I say it? It's like it's not too fat, it's not too heavy in effect, but it's still it's cool. It's an improvement. By the way, I mean, the Razor, you said you don't mind seeing it all that much, but it is a pretty damn strong hero, and do you think just maybe increasing the mana cost and static link might change it a little bit or? I don't think you need to change Razor. Oh, but, but mid lane, the yeah. Earthquake comes out, supports. Nice, Fisher Razor completely blocked in. One poof comes out. He's just running to the right side of the river. The slows, they aren't in Shadow Shaman. He just couldn't get in range for the Shackles. Yep, the Shadow Shaman just starting too late. And to be honest, the Shackle might have been not the right spell there. But oh, then again, but even going bottom lane as well. Lilith, he actually turns around for a little while. Oh my god, that was a huge mistake. But the last regular shot the Tormentor shot. He's healing something up. It's going to be enough. Oh man, he didn't even attempt the uh, Shockwave. No, because he knew that he was over the threshold. So ca that's... canceling the cell would have been still worth it. Oh, but top the tight end also under attack. <laughs> They're going on all three lanes at the same time almost. Yep, they decided to go at like two minutes and all three lanes. They're attempting something. The funny part oh, is in all three lanes. Got the heal off, but the shackles, the fisher, and that's going to be first blood. Gui picks it up on the shadow shaman. Yeah, I was just about to say in all three lanes, nothing really happened, but in the end. The Viper is getting the revenge here. Like first, the Enchantress is the one who's initiating, but then comes to turn around with the supports rotating in, and yeah, Enchantress even losing her creep there. Unfortunately, not by the Rasta. Just the pulled creeps just yeah get the credit for it. What's your take on actually the Enchantress being in that aggressive jungle like that? I mean, yes, they almost got the kill on Viper, but I mean it's good when it works out, but obviously it didn't. So she's back to her own jungle for now and let's see how long she stays there. And maybe she's gonna rotate into the Tide Hunter. Maybe she's also going to harass the mid a bit. Like for example a Wide Ring Ripper against the Meepo is not too bad because Meepo as such has already problems staying in the lane. If there's a tornado as well, that might be yeah, pretty unhealthy for the Meepo. And they have to disable the Meepo as much as they can. Yeah, and of course Meepo can always just use one Meepo to stack up the jungle although for some reason, hasn't done it so far, just sent the other Meepo home to region up. And I still would really like to see Meepos stacking up for themselves, rather than just having their supports extra rotate in for that, although he's doing it now, so all is fine. Yeah, it should be fine, and the Tide Hunter is really going balls deep, just going directly in, applying that Anchor Smash on both, and then he doesn't have to fear anything. But then again, he's chewing through a lot of tangos there, like... He had a normal stack plus a, a bird one. Now that one is out as well. And uh, yep, yeah, UG is now taking a pause. Like we have a lot of pauses here. If you ask me, way too many. At least they haven't been that long. Thank God oh, for go that. Oh, go in the mid. Go in the mid. Listen to that sound. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> Shit. Oh, like, I can't listen to this. It sounds like, I don't know, cracking someone's skull with a chainsaw. <laughs> That's actually a really good comparison, I think. And Enchantress, is he gonna go in now? I I think he missed his opening, kind of. Although Tidehunter, he always had vision of him with this Observer Ward here. But I think if Enchantress had just gone straight when he came up to the camp, it would have been enough, but... He chose to double stack it and farm it up with the wild wing, but oh, Titanter, can he actually steal some of them? He gets three of the small creeps, but the slow down on Cherico. He has 1.2 glimpses as well. Yoka eats his way through the tree. Damn jukes. Man. Damn jukes. Did you but see? The glimpse. Oh, the glimpse. oh, he's back. He's blocked in as well. Spectre comes in. Can they get the kill? The creeps actually body blocking everybody, but Cherico, he's on top of everything. No, the Titanter is so damn tanky. Anchor smash. No, he goes down. 
Oh, that was some next level blocking, but in the mid we also have a kill here on the Razor. This time the combination actually worked with the Rasta, Earthshaker and the Meepo together. So in the end they just lose the offliner for the mid actually getting ahead now of the Razor. The Razor so far of course much better farming 18 and 11. The Meepo 17-0 now, so he's doing quite fine and of course he's working with his second Meepo as well. Just going forth and back in the fountain. But yeah, so he stays definitely all the time in XP range and even managed to get some CS, so he's doing absolutely fine. Yeah, and really props to the THG supports as well for just ensuring that the Meepo has a good time mid lane, coming in for that one gank and just hoping to see a little bit more of that because Viper can definitely handle the Centaur solo. It's not nice to give Centaur some free XP, but if you can actually get kills on other lanes, it's probably worth it. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, it's not too active of a game, I mean, we're five and a half minutes in, only three kills. One of them was like more or less a bit sloppy first blood given away by the Enchantress, just yeah, not seeing that the two supports just coming back from a gank in mid. But so far, I don't know, like the top kill, like the top gank was really the best one just because Jericho Yasho with his uh, with his body block, that was some amazing plays. And even before the Tide Hunter doing some really nice jokes around the trees, just eating that tree away and just, yeah making it possible but glimpse that's the problem you can choke as much as you want as long as the disruptor has some sort of vision on you and he's fast enough with a glimpse easy going and actually all in this room as i really will get it but oh. now that the support jericho has left the top lane you can see tied under just completely bullying bench specter he can't even go up close thanks to the anchor smash really yep with the level 3 anchor smash you, you just don't want to be there and and also the spectre doesn't have too much of region anymore, like just the stick, which is of course good against the anchor smash because it's a spammable ability, so you get definitely some nice stick charges. But I don't know when there's gush and anchor smash come out. Look at the damage now, an anchor smash on the spectre. Yeah, that's like I don't know a sixth of his HP. It really hurts. He even has to use this off right now. You mean I think if Tide Hunter would have wanted to push his luck, maybe like Ravage and another Anchor Smash would have been enough to get the kill. But of course, if it's not, your Ravage is just on cooldown and it's Ravage is really like an anti-gank spell as well. If you have it's that... It's too risky. Oh, like, I mean going alone. Toy! Actually, first Earthpine comes out, will there be a second one as well? Vestius comes in and they will get the kill in the end. Yes, they will. Yep, so. the Meepo now soon, 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 getting really fat. The Razor in the mid can't really do anything. The rotations of the supports are coming. The house is down, really nice execution. Like, we, we saw a relatively weak execution on the first one, on the first gank attempt, but since then, they've been on spot. They secured the first blood, and twice now the Razor in the mid, which is definitely needed. This gives the Meepo exactly the advantage he needs. Yeah, actually, maybe Enchantress can make something happen. They do need to kill on the Meepos. You said that he's gotten the advantage that he needs and it is completely spot on. But Union Gaming, they have to find something to just shut him down, at least slow him down, if not shut him down completely. At the moment though, their heroes just aren't equipped to do that. I mean, Disruptor, if he rotates, what will he really accomplish? I don't think it's just... They don't have any heroes that can benefit as much in the early game. I mean, Razor, yes, the Plasma Field does a moderate amount of damage, but not nearly enough, I think. But Tidehunter might be in some trouble, slowed down. Actually, the Thunderstrike is there as well. Really pop the Ravage, yes, he will. The TPs are coming in. It is the Viper, and now Spectre uses his ultimate. Yoko will go down as Jericho gonna fall low as well. One more right click, they use the Stampede to escape. So oh, yeah. there's a Courier as well. They have to be careful. Of Shaker, now he can't really do it. He's too slow. That's one hit. He needs three, at least, or four even. So, nope. But I mean, they get the Disruptor for the Tidehunter. It's. I don't know, for the use of a Ravage, it's kind of a weak outcome. Then again, Spectre ulti was used, the ramp Ravage, uh, the Ravage, I say, the Stampede was used. But in the meantime, like I said it in the draft, all you need to do, you need to create for space for the Meepo, and the support's just doing so well. And oh, the Enchantress, on the hunt. Well, he might get the kill as well if he micros it correctly. Oh no, the troll just died before the Ensnare came out. He wanted to bait him. Oh. He really wanted to bait him. Oh, wow. He saw the poof, he, he, he faked the poof just to bait the Conqueror stun out and then poof away. But the Enchantress didn't want to, like he was well aware of that. But still, the Enchantress alone, early roaming Enchantress is interesting. Yes, it might actually lead to kills, but not if you're alone. And top, do we have a go? Or maybe Disruptor is just showing now. Oh, it should, it should be an easy kill though. Vestius has the Fisher actually not using it. He doesn't want to use the mana. Finally goes for it and Jericho. Is he blocked in? No, he's not. But the last right click from the Viper catches him anyway. Benjus yep. has to escape as well. 
that was actually a bad fissure, like putting him in on this side of the fissure, like in in the night, that might have been a problem because they he might have been just at the edge of the fog of war. And yeah, but at least in the mid they're gonna push now. The racer doing quite some damage with the help, of course, with the conquerors. So then Chandra's doing something, but she's getting oh stunned under the tower, and now the Meepo is coming in. Poof, 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 poof. And there she is. I actually really like Meepo against Enchantress overall because if you have just traditional right click carries, the Enchantress, when with the maxed out untouchable at some point when she's at higher levels, is actually a real pain in the ass. But poof, just you don't even have to hit him. The magical damage burst is just more yep, than that, enough. That's that's why I said like the Enchantress, they picked the Enchantress in into already like four nice magical nukes and then in the end it comes the Meepo out, so like all four, like all five of those heroes, they have some nukes for the enchanters where untouchable doesn't help you at all. Yeah, and now THD, they even just further their lead even more as they get the tier 1 tower top lane using the Mass Serpent Wars for that. So, I mean, they're just on a roll at the moment. Look, looking at the net worth, both the Meepo and the Viper, they're just 2,000 ahead of anybody on Union Gaming. Yep, absolutely. It, it's really working out fine for them at the moment. It's it's just it's really really looking good, and the craft pretty much tell tell us the same. Like 1,500 in XP, and when you look at the gold, it's almost 4k, and this is just by kills and one tower. Oh, oh but they get the glimpse of Lelis. He has the mech though. He's going to for the turnaround. Viper strike used. He's actually taking a lot of damage still to pop his mech. Is he holding onto it? Why, man? Oh, finally pops it, but still might get cold. Plasma field comes in, and yeah. He does yep. go down, but they painted a lot of spells still. Oh, uh, they did. I mean, the Viper being already really, really tanky with four points into corrosive skin, but in the end, this they had to commit their four people for one Viper, and I don't know. There, w there weren't any rotations on the way. The, the Viper was really just stalling time, but as I said, all the Meepo needs is some space, and he will just snowball like mad, and you just see that Meepo, two Meepos in the jungle, one in the mid, He's just optimizing his farm at the moment, and he's always, at all times, just ready to go for ganks. Even a Titander now, despite the fact that he's being low HP now, I mean, he still has a Tango, he still has Arcanes. Uh, they could go for a gank, but the center already on his way home to the fountain. Yeah, and rightfully so as well. He does have his Blink there, so that is huge, but oh, they get side run. There's one. Wow, God, they even used the Master Pet Wars for that. <laughs> That's some dedication right there, like, I mean, wow, the wards for almost 100% kill. I mean, free Meepo's proof with the Hex still available and the other Shock using the wards there. Like, that Rasta, he doesn't make any jokes. He's like 100% kill or nothing. Yeah, it's like, man down, kill secured. Guys, I got the gold. Of course, they maybe could have put them to use for the tier 1 tower, but I think it's just getting... Uh, the kill on Razor definitely worth it because Razor still does not have the mech a whole recipe away, so it needs another 800 gold. And it's already 13 minutes in. The later you get the mech, or actually, never mind, he had the recipe on the ground, I guess, not in the stash or anything. So it's not that bad 30 minutes in, but he just has the casual boots, whereas Viper has already power threads finished and another 1k on top of that. Yep, absolutely. It's, it looks really good for uh, THD, but what we haven't seen so far is Union Gaming like a full-out team fight, like something where they really use everything, some clutch fight, but to be honest, we already said in a draft, like the clutch fight actually favors THD, but then again, like with Arasta and the Earthshaker the, the whole time roaming, a Meepo who is now present on at least two-thirds of the map by now, or at least 50% of the map, like everything up to the river line. I don't know, that's that's really, it's it's really, really bad because you have at least one Meepo coming in then poofing the entire army behind it and if you are lucky and you're in the range of Viper which slows you or of course the Earthshaker plus the Rasta, I don't know, but let's see, I mean, let's see, I really want to wait for a fight, we also must not forget Union Gaming is on Roshan's side, but then again they have a, they have a draft that doesn't favor Roshan. Like, I mean, who's gonna kill Roshan except for the Enchantress? Enchantress is all cool because she can solo tank it, but who's doing the damage at the moment? Nobody is. Spectre is a hard carry that needs ages to come online. The Razor, the Razor is partially just as strong as he is at the moment in meta because of static link, but of course you can't say like, hey, hey, THD, come please along, we're in the rush pit, I need damage for Roshan. No, that doesn't work, obviously. So, I don't know, I'm a bit worried that they can't even secure Roshan if, if THD secures this advantage. And they just say G, and in that second, 
the Enchantress just disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, a little bit unfortunate. Hopefully, it's nothing too serious. As I think Jericho might be in some trouble. He of course, has the glimpse to send the Viper back if the Viper actually wants to commit the Viper Strike for it. But still, I mean, Disruptor. He hasn't had any impact. He is level 6 now after that last Viper kill, I think. That's where he got his level 6. So, Static Hey, he got the kill on Titan. Yeah. That's well. not, not any impact. That's like a small impact so far. Yeah, but compared to that of the Earthshaker who's been ro roaming around, just uh, yeah. helping out get kills 1, 0, sure. and 4. Shadow Shaman with Mass Serpent Wars, of course, getting a tower, getting another kill. Just not comparable. Yes, he has had an impact, but just a really minor one. But still, I mean, there's also there's also a Spectre on the pitch, and as long as there's a Spectre, that might still go super tanky and then dishes out so much damage. Let's see. I mean, I'm always like, as long as there's a Morphling, Anti-Mage or Spectre on the pitch, I'm really, really careful now. Or maybe the Meepo, but they don't really have anything to kill him, and he, he can poof away pretty much soon. He's using the Nets just to disable them for a tiny bit, and now poof, 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 and he's gone. The first second Look, I thought, like... Longest. <laughs> Look at this! This dagger of the Spectre is going across the entire map. <laughs> oh, that, spec that, <laughs> that dagger was really like omni ominous. ominous. Oh, but in the mid? Is there a deny attempt coming in? Oh, well, the attempt will be there. Whether it will be successful. Actually, off <laughs> the Fisher completely whiffs. And now Spectre uses the ultimate as well. Glimps onto the Urshik group and easy into the hoof. So perfectly done. And now the Stampede comes out. Hui. He's actually taking a lot of time, he's gonna go down before anything, he Hex is there, but there's the Ravage hitting on two heroes, not the best, but Toy, he comes in with the poofs, kills off the Spectre, that's exactly what he wanted inside Rally, and oh, the TP, almost successful, but not quite as Angel, gets the hoofstone for double edge, oh. a second too late. Yeah, that double edge actually might have killed the Meepo, but he was really too late, I don't know, what interrupted his first cast, was it the net? Was the net interrupting his hoofstone cast think... animation, or did he himself, I, I don't know, but that looked really weird, like, but then again, I was lagging a bit on that server now. Like, also the Fisher is appearing like 0 0.1 seconds after it was actually cast, and the Static Storm also like materialized out of nowhere because somehow the Earthshaker still got the Echo Slam throw. So either he didn't cast it instantly, or I don't know. But I think the Static Storm could have been a bit earlier, so the Echo Slam doesn't come out. Either way, it was an okayish fight. Everything in yeah considering everything around, but the tower is still going down, down, and it was not denied as far as I know, as far as I've seen it, at least. Yeah, I don't think it was. Union Gaming, they were more just focusing on the fight, getting those kills with the initiation of the glimpse, and actually, the Earthshaker got his Echo Slam off as well before he died there, but Meepo, from that fight, he has his Blink Dagger, Agony Sweater was finished, of course, like 30 minutes in already, and looking yep. at the net worth, Meepo, 9.7k compared to the Spectre's 4.7. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. At the moment, he has presence on two lane, one in the fountain. If he wants to, he can even... Oh, no. He first gets the spike. That's Viper Strike as well, and they get them so fast down. This is almost too fast to cast. Yeah, the, the Spectre Spectral Dagger, usually you can use it to just go into the trees from low ground to high ground, what, what have you. And oh, mid lane, they get the Hex Shackles to follow up as well. Oh, Titan jumps into the Static Storm. The Static Storm placement was really nice, but I don't think Sanders can still make it out. One Earth find nicely dodged, but will it be enough? No, with the poofs. <laughs> meep, 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 meepo is coming to the rescue. There was no Ravage, like he was going in like he has Ravage, but no, that was just here, there for the Anchor Smash. He still has only a level 1 Gush, but that's pretty much all you need. He went for the Ice as Ice build, going for the 4 points in Kraken Shell, going full tanky. But yeah, it works out. We are 13-5 in 16 minutes, and to be honest, with the two tier 1 towers down, the question is what does THD want next? Saving the tier 2 tower, or thinking about maybe sneaking Roshan? Actually, I mean, I think the Roshan would be so easy for them. They do have to be a little bit wary of, of course, just the Kinetic Field, Static Storm, Hoof Stomp, Double Edge combination. But the Meepo, he's just so far ahead at the moment, up to another 2.5k gold. He's level 16, almost level 17. And I don't know what can stop the Meepo or, or their team overall, because they're just completely spiraling out of control. Looking at the graphs as well, it was like... Gradually going step by step by step, and the last step was just climbing Mount Everest all of a sudden. Yep. More than it, a 10k gold lead, actually 12,000 now, and XP 10,000 as well. There's nothing UG can do at the moment, that's that's the biggest problem. The initiative is really on THD's side. 
And since they're not committing to towers or anything, you can't really catch them, for example, in a very awkward position. And the funny part about uh, THD is that the Meepo is really farming almost the jungle empty, completely empty, taking even stacks with the Titans on top, then farming into lanes, and also the supports getting more and more levels now. The Shadow Shaman just had the opportunity to farm bottom, while the Earthshaker is in the mid. That means we're gonna have soon Blink Daggers out on those two supports. One is already coming, the Rasta just achieved his dagger, and if you look at the Earthshaker's money, we have 2080. That means, yeah, with this camp he's just working on, he pretty much gets the next one. I mean, he's the next one with a dagger. Oh. Oh, never mind. Whew. I was like, Toy, is he really gonna steal that camp from the Earthshaker? But no, no. Just no. helping out. Like a this good was actually is. beautifully done. Did you see the poofs? Just like put the Hellbear Smasher in like 50, per, uh, 50 HP range and then the Earthshaker just finished it off. Now he's going back to the fountain, buying a TP and then coming in and we might see a fat, fat Aqua Slam. Oh, this is gonna be so huge and I think, yeah, the Aghanims is gonna be finished on Lelis's Viper in, well, 40 gold now. And 19 minutes in, Earthshaker having a Blink Dagger, Shadow Shaman, Tide Hunter of course as well, and going for the Refresher Orb already has the Oblivion Staff for it. They just have all the items and more that they would require to win a team fight. Yep, absolutely. And well, UG, it looked like for a moment that they are trying to get the initiative here, getting a tier 1 tower, which definitely would help their account. Because it's they are pretty much bankrupt. Oh, but they go top lane. They want to kill off one toy. The poofs are coming in. The static storm actually catches all of them. This might be their open. If they get the kill, they're going to get a ton of XP, and they do get it. And Wicked Sick is somehow down. survives. 90 HP left. Yep, Wicked Sick is down. That's 978 gold from that Meepo. And of course, it's a high value kill because that Meepo was already level 17, which is, that, that's the funny part, if you look at the hero levels and everything, it's it's not too crazy the difference when you take the supports, for, like for example, but the Meepo in net worth and XP, it's just nuts, the difference. <laughs> oh, at least Razor is level 12 now. Last time I checked, it was like, he was, Meepo was 17, everybody was level 11, maybe 10, but... And this kill, like I said, it was actually a really high profile kill. But they'll lose the tier 2 for it and probably be gonna lose the 2 supports mid lane now as well. The jump comes in with the Fisher. Sandrels is gonna go down for sure. Enchant Totem right clicks. Yeah. Well, oh, even the can only get one hero this, back. But she's still living. Oh. Look at this little Enchantress. But they get the Disruptor on top of it. So both of the supports are going down in the mid. And I think this is now either Roshan or tier 2 tower. But to be honest, I think this is tier 2 tower. Because, uh, uh, Roshan, I mean. Because they don't have anything to fear now. The, the only thing that killed the Meepo was really the, the Static Storm plus Kinetic Field there, top, just locking him in. But without the Disruptor, who's, who's gonna kill that Meepo? I think the correct answer is nobody, especially he will have the Aegis now as well. Literally unkillable, at least twice. Yep, and the Spectral Dagger is just scouting it out and they actually wanna go in here. Oh, but the Titan is damage is stolen, he pops the Ravage, he actually connects on Angel somehow as well. They have the Stampede, they actually use the Static Storm. Catching to the hoof on the double edge. They kill off the two as well. Where's the Meepo man? You have to jump in, Toy. You're the damage dealer here. That was a bad fight. That was a bad fight. A bad ravage and a bad fight, to be honest. Like the Tide Hunter tanking there for the entire team, but the team taking ages till they actually come around. And then with the Static Storm, three people inside. Kinetic Field, two people inside. And they just get nuked down by everyone who just arrived at the tier two tower. So after this ages, they just fed away two of their heroes for nothing. Maybe it's they're confident, they say like, okay guys, yeah, we give UG something here, and then we keep on going, but to be honest, I think if the positioning was right here, they could have turned around this fight easily, especially with the Ravage on their side. Yeah, they definitely just didn't have the jump Meepo was maybe a little bit too late in action, maybe his Blink Dagger got disabled by something, not too sure, but I mean, losing two heroes is not the end of the world still. UG, they will definitely take just any small thing that they get, but oh, the Fisher, they catch two on the wrong side, but Toy, he goes in with the poofs, blows up one, the second goes down, and Angel, Blade Mill activated, but it's not gonna be enough, Toy, he's not even taking any damage, tanking up the tower like a boss, and Yoka, he comes in with the Gush, slowing him down, that is a 3-4-0. Yep. That's exactly what I mean, like, the center, like, once everything is cast, and there's a Wiper, you just don't get away, you just don't get away, there's no four stuffs yet, no nothing coming out anything you can do against the kiting, but nope, it just doesn't work out. And look at THD, they really want to finish this game, like fast, as in not falling back, not farming even more, just doing that damage. Look at the Meepo, just dealing so much damage, but he has to be careful though. 
Well, careful or not. Oh, the Echo Slam with the poofs. Two heroes just <laughs> poofed. Nice. <laughs> oh, the mech keeps going alive. Yes, he survives 20 HP. Are you kidding me? And look, the Earthshaker just go and ham for your Echo here. That poor guy. Oh, man. There's just not having a cool time. The support just die one after the other all the time. And oh, no, the actually, they might get the counter. No, the hoof stomp misses double H though. Easy enough to get the kill, but oh, he's going back in the poofs. They actually missed, missed micro. Only one poof went in. Or rather, the blink was there, but Angel getting slowed down by the Viper Strike. No stampede to use anymore. He's just getting kited. Look at this. It's This is so sad. This is so sad watching the center and they even go on the Enchantress and she's just exploding. She's just getting obliterated and now there's only one guy left. It is the post back to instant hexed and they call the GG out as the nets come out. It's a full team wipe, plus even buybacks. The racks on top tier 3, top that all action. GG. Yeah, I, I really think it was a drafting error, more or less, from Union Gaming. They just didn't feel like they mixed and matched, or they just picked whatever tickled their fancy or something and didn't really no. I mean, the draft, about... such, the draft as such is not bad, but like I just didn't understand that they came up with certain heroes after they already saw what THD is coming up with. Like a center into a Viper, I don't know, then uh, what what came last, and I don't know, okay, the Spectre, hmm. And they didn't they didn't pick anything against the Meepo, for example, but then again, it was also hard to pick something because the Earthshaker was already there, for example, but the Ember was banned by themselves. I don't know, it was a really an awesome draft for THD. They just owned this game in the draft and 23 minutes took it like to execute it through. Either way, guys, this is a best of two or a two game series rather. And therefore, wait for game number two. And the question is, does THD ace this with a 2-0 or does Union Gaming come back in game number two and make it a 1-1? So stay tuned. In two, three, four minutes, we are back for game number two.